Good afternoon, it is Wednesday, my dude, so that means it's Spice Gun time. The B580, we've covered it recently, it's the new talk of the town, it's the new big hype. The only sort of problem is it actually doesn't run very well with very entry level CPUs. So I thought, um, considering that there already is a pre-built um, with it in, I thought what if I did my own pre-built centering around the GPU because on Uncle Eve Tech, if you didn't know, they're 5,700 Rand and it completely blows the RX 7600 and the 4060 out of the water on value in video AMD. We're waiting for your and highly anticipated reaction. But until then, for those of us who are looking to support this new awesome bit of technology from Intel that came out of absolutely nowhere, I've got a build for you, basically, is the TLDR, which is what we're going to go through today. The kind of level you should look at specking to get the most out of it without spending too much money that it starts losing its value is basically the idea behind today's bias guide. So starting off with the aforementioned centerpiece, we are going to be using the Challenger version of this GPU. It really didn't produce enough heat for me to be worried about this. It's still got passed through cooling, which is about a five degree different so make sure when you're buying a new graphics card that it doesn't pass through cooling because the air pumping into the back plate versus going straight through is a considerable difference for your gpu this is also just a two slot card you can see they've actually kept it right within the two slot frame so it's going to be easy to work with and it is quite a short boy as well if i remember correctly if we just go to the specifications over here and we go down on the side it is a 249 millimeter so we don't need the longest case under the sun either then for the upgrade kit we're going with the 14400f which is like a good mid-range sort of like okay it's pretty entry level still cpu but it's like the upper end of the entry level cpus available unfortunately no 5700x stock because that would have been a good one the 5700 non-x can't keep up with this in single core performance and that's where we see the performance degradation so for single core performance and a cost per frame rate effect this is the best price kit you can get it with faster 3600 megahertz ram if you want to go for uh, RAM speed, if you don't really need 32 gig, 32 gig, I would say is kind of, it's just nice. It just gives a little bit of headroom. The 16 gig is the bare minimum. Both of these kits though, come with two DIMMs. The primary kit that's on here is a single 16 gig DIMM. So rather get the dual channel, that's a huge performance increase, 10 to 15% on average. I did a piece on Ryzen and RAM with that, and we really showed how different that it really is. Um, so make sure you get it with a, a the dual channel kit i've gone with the 32 gig option just to make sure that there's a little bit of headroom if you wanted to do some streaming as an example then normally with the upgrade kits we do get pretty good at cpu coolers the included cooler will be okay but i wanted to upgrade it slightly because you can increase the wattage through the 14400 f through the through that now it doesn't really have hardcore like per core overclocking but it allows you to increase the amount of power that you can put through it and when you do that that's going to increase the heat and then this will keep it cool so that you get the better boost clocks out of it and once again we defeat the issue of that single core performance then for storage i gotta go with old faithful the SN580, yes, there are drives that have technically higher end, like faster overall for the same sort of money, but reliability and small ride cycles, this thing's continuously shown that it's one of the best drives out there. Then for power supply, Gumdias dropping the Kratos 750 gold on us. This is kind of overkill. You could get away with a 600 watt, honestly, on this system, but this is nicely overkill. The price versus performance here cannot be ignored for a thousand bucks. Then for case, I went for something a little bit different. This Mag Forge jumped out at me because it's got three fans up front and a single at the back, but it's MATX still. So as we've got the shorter MATX motherboard in the build, I was like, why not? I've been kind of encouraging people to go in this direction because it's just nicer, more compact, easier to move around. There's a whole bunch of uh, of nice added advantages it's got a power supply shroud with a little window so you can see what the power supply is over there but the full mesh front with those three fans up front like that and the single exhaust you basically wouldn't have to touch it it should be perfect as is if you wanted to throw another fan up top you'd be able to do that it can take six in total so there's space for two up top if you wanted to get a 240 more rad later and slap that up top or swap that out as an example it gives you enough flexibility that you're going to be able to get a really really nice MATX build inside of this case 
And that brings us swiftly around to our final card at 16,600 Rand. You can now get a AAA gaming PC that will play anything, even with some ray tracing, because we saw that with the B580 test. That's kind of impressive. That's basically what a PS5 Pro costs. And a PS5 Pro can't do ray tracing. Hashtag just say. This should slap it amongst the gills. That I think the what the new T-flops on that is about 14 teraflops. This graphics card already does more than that. So yeah, this will this will slap and it will basically be one of the best bang for buck gaming PCs around. However, there is actually something that's all kind of sort of better bang for buck, and that is the EveTech pre-built that exists. It's very similar in its setup. You won't have as nice CPU cooling, um, but a big plus with the pre-built is it comes with licensing for Windows 11 Pro, which is quite expensive and 15 and a half thousand Rand with a 24 month warranty um, out of EveTech side. So yeah, um, it's very like it's this was so I, I was laughing at the end i was like it's so similar the only thing i would change in this is have the 14400f otherwise it's basically exactly the same thing and then my lipshins is your intel b580 buyer's guide i hope you have enjoyed this i hope you've been given some insight into buying with us like i said if you pair this with a very entry level like ryzen 5 5500 or something to that effect you're really not going to get the full potential of the b580 honestly in that instance you'd be better off going with the rx 7600 or with an rtx 4060 because they don't um, suffer as much performance loss on those sorts of platforms and then the value kind of balances out the b580 though is really nice to have for the 12 gig video memory and as intel improves their codecs and and such and very hopefully in the near future we'll have av1 encoding for streaming then it becomes a no-brainer it's a it's one of the cheapest ways to go about doing that anywho that is all i have for you this week what are your thoughts on it please let me know down below would you like to see me build that pc on the channel and test it maybe for next week's buyer's guide let me know in the comments down below until next time hope you guys stay safe keep well and i will see you on the flip side